it all start it all started with Beauty and the Beast. I'm pretty sure it's probably Disney. Let's be honest. Dark romance, gothic romance, historical romance. That's that's it, that's how it started. Was that our gateway? <laughs> Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is Books Forever After where I sit on my floor, we talk about everything and all things books. So today is an exciting collab video with Becky from Bex Reads and um, we're doing a Beauty and the Beast retelling vlog. So she is doing romanticy or fantasy romance and I'm doing historical romance. So I was so excited when um, but she said yes, so for once I actually asked her <laughs> to do this collab and um, this idea just came to me because I've been really feeling like some historical romance um, but I wanted to do something fun and what better way than to do Beauty and the Beast because I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure it's probably Disney. Wasn't everything Disney? <laughs> it's always Beauty and the Beast. It all, start it all started with Beauty and the Beast. Let's be honest, dark romance, gothic romance, historical romance, that's a fairy tale feeling. Um, I'm a goner, that's, that's, it, that's how it started. I'm sure we all, I mean, we're readers, romance readers. Didn't we all start with Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> Was that our gateway? <laughs> Probably, I think we've been indoctrinated probably since we were kids, so I think that was me. <laughs> so, um, the yellow dress, yes, I even had to Beauty and the Beast everything. I even had everything in Beauty and the Beast because, you know, I was brunette, I was reader, and especially when I had to get glasses, I'm like, you know, she likes books, I like books, I mean, she's me. Um, when I prefer the library over the prints. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Uh, but yes, I had everything Beauty and the Beast. I had those 90s, I'll put a picture up here just because for reference, I had those 90s, um, the bed sheets, the alarm clock, the pillowcase. I I swear I had practically everything. So so yes, I. it's one of my favorite retellings and for good reason, it's so good. Because it has everything, it has grumpy sunshine it has a scarred hero like a scarred hero or a mysterious hero and you have got a huge mansion a gothic mansion and vibes i mean that's i just love it and i mean the library i'm like the only thing that's missing is the library <laughs> that's yes yes so with that said <laughs> Um, I'm going to try to do with this vlog. I think we're going to try to do three books in this vlog and um, We'll see how it goes <laughs> So I have a, a few options here and um, I was just oh Gosh, Crystal, can you just stay on track for once? Can you can we stay on track? Okay, hold on a second Let me gather gather my thoughts. What was I saying? Yes, anyway <laughs> So I just wanted to, I wanted to read Beauty and the Beast and you know, that's my favorite retelling, but I wanted to incorporate historical romance. So I kind of was looking at my lovely, lovely new shelves that I organized. They're not new shelves, but I organized them. That makes sense. So I felt like enjoying my library because I got to see and look and discover what books I want to read. So doing that and I went through Goodreads to see any others that I might own that kind of falls within this trope per se. Yeah the whole scarred hero thing I will kind of put like a definition up here because I'm an analyst and that's just what I do because I want to know what the true definition is of something because it has to make sense <laughs> to understand so there we go. So that is what a Beauty and the Beast kind of retelling is. So it's not really a retelling, but like inspiration or whatever kind of kind of scenario. 
Wow, I am already talking way too much already. All right, I need to stop myself. Let's just get started. So I have four books that I want to kind of see. There's one I'm not so sure about, but we'll see. But I was really intrigued about this one. I had this for the longest time on my Amazon wish list, and this is Beast by Judith Ivory. And it has a lovely step back, which was a lovely surprise because I didn't even know it came with the back step back when I purchased it. So yeah, this one I think is actually set in 1905. Um, so basically the golden age. And she's on this ship, the heroine's on the ship, she is engaged. Um, her parents are kind of has set up to marry the stranger. She has never met him. Um, he's a prince, but not from France. But like after that time, they're not really royalty per se. They're just, that's their title. And he has a reputation of just being like a monster beast kind of guy where just because of his disfigurement, so to speak. And she's on this ship to go across the seas to marry him and she discovers or she becomes acquainted with the hero who is kind of doing a hidden identity kind of a scenario to to kind of show their I don't, I, he starts to do it as a joke I think is what I understand and he wants to um, kind of like test her I think based off the the blurb I got from my understanding and but they end up having an affair and then it comes time I think at the end where now he's competing with himself because she has fallen in love with the secret stranger um, so now, and then she, like, I, I'm guessing is battling, loving two people. That's my understanding. So, so yeah. So we have that. So that sounds intriguing. Um, I don't, I think the time period as well is was really interesting because it doesn't really necessarily, it kind of does with the dress. But I think the time period is what I'm really interested in on this as well. So you don't really see too much of this. And I never read this author before. Next is, um... Beauty and the Beast by Hannah Howe. I don't know if I want to read this one. Um, I was looking at Goodreads and like the ratings are really low, like a low three, so that usually doesn't bode too well. And so yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know about this one. This one says it's on the eve of her wedding to the heir of Saturn Manor, um, the beautiful Geetha. Well, yeah, I already don't want to read this. <laughs> Um, is shocked to learn that her betrothed, a man she barely know, barely knew, her betrothed, a man she barely knew is dead, and now she must marry the new heir, um, who is a battle-hardened knight known as the Red Devil. So, there we go. So, this one is a maybe. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and then, this one is probably what I might read instead of that one, is, um, When Beauty Teamed the Beast by... Eloisa, uh, Eloisa James and I think this one actually is part of the series um, it's a standalone series so you can probably read it out of word as a matter uh, her fairy tale um, series and this one obviously Beauty and the Beast and Eloisa James is the hit or miss so I'm kind of apprehensive on reading this um, but I have heard that people where she, this author is a hit or miss they really enjoyed this one so I'm looking forward to that um, this is about Pierce Yelverton, Earl of Marchant, and he lives in a castle in, in Wales, um, where he has a rumor to have a very, very bad temper. Um, and because he is known as a reputation where his wound um, has kind of made him known as being immune to any woman. Um, and then Lynette is not just any woman. And she's very lovely, very beautiful, known as for, for her beauty. And it says she will, she estimates that the Earl will fall madly in love in just two weeks. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all the blurb kind of says with that. So don't know much about it, that at all. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then this one, I kind of wanted to see if I would read this one last. See if I 
because I'm thinking this might be the best. Um, this is Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros. I don't remember, I think I read a book, one book by her um, for the Historical Hellion book club, I think. Um, but, but yeah, I think that one was like a three star. So it wasn't like anything that I overly hated or overly liked. It was just kind of middle of the road for me. Um, so this one's yours until dawn. I believe this one is she is a, it's like a nurse taking care of the hero who is blind. And that's all I know. <laughs> so kind of going into this one blind. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. So I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a testing of battle of wills and everything like that. So, which always makes me think it might have some really great banter. So that's what I'm really, really hoping for. So yes, we have that. Um, oh yes, here's the step back for this one. And then we have the step back for Beauty Tans and Beast. Um, yeah, this one does have a step back. Only one of the bunch of step back. Okay. Well, yeah, so so that's it. We'll get started and, and see how it goes. Um, <laughs> I'm a slower reader, so I'm hoping to get this done in a week. Who knows? Um, and life is kind of crazy right now at work. Um, I'm going through a reorg at work, so it's been kind of, kind of, uh, and stressy. <laughs> Not like it, so, um, so I guess I will, um, I think I'll start with this one, and, um, I'll see you in the check-in. All right. Okay, I'm always horrible at the updates. <laughs> Gonna, as you saw, I probably had an intro kind of backwards, but you know, intro happening after the start of the vlog, but that's, that's fine. Just been, yeah, so I'm 66% The Way Through the Beast by Judith Ivory. Um, this is painful, <laughs> so painful. Um, yeah, they're both very vain. And I've been primarily listening it to it by the narrator, um, so I don't I don't know if I like the narrator as well. But even physically reading it, it's slow. Um, and I was thinking I would be able to get this done in like two days, but you know, I over always underestimate, I guess myself, um, or overestimate sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm not enjoying it it's a slog um and they're both very vain so they're not and she's very immature and very yeah i would say vain so there's not and he's the same as well it's very contrived i think is the word and they're also just no connection Especially with any band, like, there's no, like, point. There's no connection, the banter. It's all very a physical attraction. But at the same time, that physical attraction isn't believed. I mean, she's been in the dark the whole time with him on the ship. Um, oh, and by the way, this is, like, in... It's 1905, so it's in like the golden age, like Edwardian area era. I guess it's what it's called. Um, it starts off there on the ship, and it's very <laughs> reminiscent of Titanic because the ship does hit like a small iceberg. Um, and he's in the cabin, hidden away, because he wasn't supposed to be on the ship but he was really there because with his mistress so it's already started an opening scene with his mistress so that's kind of like shady and <laughs> so already it's a little icky and she started having um her name's louise she had like a little bit of like an interest like clandestine things one of the um employees on the ship and he like uh just like basically trying to toy with him and flirt with him and get a kiss out of it and everything and, and he was hidden behind like the stairs and he saw her this is just painful it's painful um 
so yeah, they're, like I said, their their ship hits the iceberg. I'm all over the place, and <laughs> so some of the lights are off. Um, they're fine. It's gonna hold. It's very minor scratch, I guess. And but like part the front of the ship, the is out of the electrics, the electric light, and he's like on his suite is on the top or whatever. But I don't know. It's there's an incident with the doll, her dog that, and he first like kind of encounters her there where they they hold all the the animals um, and pets, and he's in a the dark there, and it's just strange. And she comes up to him to his room, things kind of ensue, and he's also wearing like um, Arabian clothing. Um, and he's dark skinned, so he looks like he is like Middle Eastern or something like that. Um, he got he, so added to that, um, she can't see that his eye, and he has like a scar over his eye, and yeah, he has a scar of his eye, and he has like his knee injury, so sometimes he has to walk with a cane. And I think he's like in his 30s, and she's 18. I mean, she's an immature 18, she's a child, and so yeah. She has long blonde hair, um, classic beauty, whatever. And so he's deceiving her by, you know, not being who he says he is. Um, because he is, I think he had a meeting with some, um, some Middle Eastern men. And that's because he does like a, he does like perfumes and such. It's his business to get, you know, to get ambergris which oh my gosh every title of the chapter is about something about amber green and that's not very interesting <laughs> so annoying oh gosh oh and she calls him Charles even though his made up name they don't know names but the same name as her intended and it's just oh my gosh and he calls her like he looks at her as a girl but she's a beautiful girl and it's just icky it's icky. So yeah. So now at the part they just got married. And now he's trying to she's being very aloof and cold. They did have a one they oh, he took her virginity as the stranger. Um and now uh, she's being cold and aloof. Um she's like doesn't want to have a wedding night with him. She's going to sleep on the couch because, you know, she has feelings for him. And he speaks in French because she would recognize his English voice and his accent. Um, he starts wearing different, he's even wearing different perf like cologne and, and, and uh, soap so that she wouldn't recognize his smell. It's kind of weird. And she's like almost saying like he's got to be, um, like just by his voice, but she's never seen his face. So, and she's just abhorred about his his look so I don't know I don't know if this is good or not <laughs> I'll have more thoughts we'll see it's just I it was so promising because of the premise and that step back is so great but it's very the characters are very basic is that the right word surface level. They're very surface level and kind of annoying, but all right, I'll update you as soon as I have something else to talk about. <laughs> okay, so this is just a great presentation of Mom on a Saturday. <sighs> okay, so this is this is reality today, the Saturday. <laughs> I just finished Beast. Um I already put the book away, so I'll, uh, I'll put a little screenshot here. Uh, I think I went on a two. I ate a two star. I did not like this. And this book totally put me... I was already in a reading slump to begin with, and this book really did not help that at all. It, um... I feel like it made it worse. <laughs> but I, I pushed through. Because <laughs> I was hoping it was going to get better. It did not. Um... Needless to say, I think the characters were not well executed. Um, uh, their, the development wasn't great. 
And so at the end when they're doing this declaration and it's just like these games are playing with each other and all of a sudden she admires and loves him. It's just like it all of a sudden feels like an insta love <laughs> because there was nothing to ground the relationship to begin with to make it believable. Like even all this like it's a very flimsy flimsy plot of deception based on miscommunication. There was nothing really hindering them from doing it except he didn't want to he wanted to save face against you know not telling her it was him and then like all of a sudden she found figured it out 90% in the book because they randomly have like a love making thing that's when she started realizing it was just the writing just felt scattered it just didn't make sense um so not a very yeah oh and it has surprise baby as well as these historical romances do it was just very it was just flimsy it's just plot holes and plot and plot holes because it also like oh well i'm she's like i know i'm pregnant with you know she's very open to him but she's like oh yeah i'm pregnant you're just so understanding and like well i need to tell my family they need to know how i was not like this was it your your child that i was before my my from my affair and i'm like your parents already knew you had an affair <laughs> you know this they they had a meeting with him telling him this so i'm like why is this a surprise that they did why do they have to know it was just very strange. The fact that it is his child because it was him. So it, it, oh, this was just, yeah. For me, it, it had to be the character development. Even there wasn't very much plot. And oh my gosh, the only plot was mainly about this freaking like perfume and ambergris and rolling my eyes. So boring. <laughs> you really didn't get to know the characters at all. It was, there's no character development. I think, I guess, that, I guess it's very telling for me, as you can tell. Like, the characters aren't really well developed. They're both vain. And she's not very nice on the inside, apparently. Um, and he's just vain. I don't know. It's very, it's weird when both of them are supposed to be the beast inside. I think it was trying to do, the author was probably trying to show, like, some juxtaposition for both of the characters, but failed in the execution if she was trying to do that because at first the the female character is very louise is such a infantilized um person you know back you know and he looks at her as a young girl a girl very stated very many times then all of a sudden she's a woman it's like she flipped a switch like there was no growth i was like this was not the same heroine you're portraying in the beginning um, there was no secret death or into this character development. It was very surface level and like flipping a switch. And it was just, needless to say, based on attraction, but the, the attraction wasn't even believable because <laughs> there was no chemistry between these characters. It was just very painful to read. Um, do not recommend um, at all. <laughs> And, yeah, it was, it's very unbelievable. Um, the writing felt very painful. Not so painful that it deserves, like, a one star, but especially in the plot development, um, and the pacing, and the character development. So, that's a lot of big things for me. And not even the premise was entertaining. You know, like a crazy plot and everything, so... So yeah, two star. Um, that's that's what we're leaving at. I'm gonna start. Um, I think I, I'm changing my mind. Um, I think I'm just gonna go straight to Yours Until Dawn from Teresa Medeiros because um, I don't know if I'm gonna read the Hannah Howell one or if I'll read the Eloisa James one. Hopefully, I have time to get to that because because of that delaying <laughs> and this collab with with Becky, I don't want to delay this anymore so I don't know if I'll make it to three books um so yeah so I think we'll I'm gonna go to Teresa Medeiros Yours Until Dawn this is like the she's taking care of him um he's like a recluse 
um, and she's nursing him and all that kind of thing. So that's maybe a little different change of pace. I can't remember if I have or not. But yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in how this is uh, starting out. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, that, the Beast, the Beast book just kind of put me really to that slump because everything is just, it's really weird, like, when I'm stressed out with a lot of work, I'm, like, literally falling asleep and I get home from work, um, going through a lot of, like, work stuff, um, going through a lot of big changes at work, and it's very exhausting, and, like, this time of year, it just feels, like, exhausting. I thought I would have more time, but not gonna stop for the next couple of months so <laughs> so uh but yeah well the kids are having quiet time so i'm gonna have at least an hour <laughs> an hour or so to start this um hopefully an hour and a half <laughs> till um it's two o'clock so 3 30 um then a husband will be home from his um his alone time out and about so so yeah we'll get started uh, sorry i don't have anything else thumbs and is really bad at vlogging <laughs> this girl okay so <laughs> all right so I think the last time I updated you guys was um, Saturday when my kids were going out for quiet time and I have just started yours until dawn by Teresa Medeiros so yeah I, I read two books already <laughs> So I had just gotten done finished Beast and guys I flew through this I um you know read quite a bit I would say 30% within the hour and a half or so and then after my kids went to bed I read for like four hours straight <laughs> this after reading Beast and that being such a dud this was amazing and this is my like it's six stars this is a six star book is my first six star book of the of the year so yeah definitely it def I definitely wasn't in a reading slump I was in it was the book it wasn't me it was you book it was you okay it was you not me not me so I love this Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is amazing. So it is now like, I don't know, is it Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah, I have to load this up, <laughs> upload this tomorrow. So uh, I'm doing, I'm doing great, great guys. So uh, yeah, I, this was amazing. She is a nurse and she's coming to help me. He's blinded, he was blinded by the Napoleon War. 
Um, he was on the, oh gosh, Royal Navy and some shrapnel kind of like situation there. And first off, it starts really strong. It definitely plays into like a really grumpy grumpiness. She's not really necessarily like a sunshine heroine, but he's really grumpy. It starts off with great, great banter. Um, and some very good like comedic aspects as well. Um, I can remember that she was trying to, <laughs> he was intrigued by her um, assertiveness um, and wanted to know what she looked like. So he was asking the butler what she looked like and she overheard that and she was walking by and she was like silent and like mimed, you know, how she looked and that was just so hilariously funny. Really enjoyed it. It had a great tension and connection with the characters and just an old, and had great angst. <laughs> And it had one of my, and I don't want to spoil it, but it had one of my favorite, favorite tropes. And if you know me, you know what my absolute favorite trope is. And the way that it was interwoven was so, like, intriguing. And it made just so much more poignant. And at a certain point, you thought that, oh, it's going to be resolved and they're going to get together. And no the author just like nope not then and you're like oh it's gonna happen here and you're like no next oh it was so good it was like just because of the pining and and everything like that it was just so so good um so yeah I think also it was just also the other like the supporting the side characters also really really helped like the, you can tell like the butler and the housekeeper they just all really, like really care about um about the hero Gabriel yeah his name is Gabriel and her name is Samantha and I know it's just so great and I love that she doesn't um let him bully her and she just starts making changes and just you know he's sitting in the very dark Dang, it kind of feels very gothic and they you know she's opening windows and things and they and he's afraid he's afraid to um the workers are afraid to do that because they don't want to everything mess everything up and he's just like always always running into everything but yeah it was just it was so great oh. there was there was like a fire like um one point a fire and so he, like he saves her and that kind of a thing being blind and and such so it, obviously like, his sense of sound and like uh, scent is more um more potent but yeah there was like a fire like in a barn or something and um because she was trying to find him she thought maybe he got lost and he saves her um and before people come and realize you know to come when he was yelling fire and things like that they had a very weird I will say this was the one small weird thing that I'm like mm, I don't think that like kind of pulled me out of the story I'm like that doesn't seem sanitary doesn't seem realistic <laughs> is um they start kissing and getting hot and heavy and you know he's He's covered in ash, and maybe it's just my nerve. Diaper. Okay, is it just me? Please let me know. This is this would be weird for you. Like I don't think this would happen. <laughs> but this is their first time. I think they get like physical a little bit, and he starts doing the finger in the wahoo. So, but he just pulled her out, and there was that, and it's smoke. And I'm just thinking that's dirty and not in a good way <laughs> it just seemed like a weird awkward like timing like this is not the time to be doing that at all like like not not the time <laughs> maybe if you would have like apprehended her in like a 
I don't know, my favorite, like in the magic, in like some sort of closet or something. I don't know. And it started there, but yes. Or any time that she's been like nursing him when he, um, he also fell and hurt himself, I think, at the beginning of this, where very similar to Beauty and the Beast. Like he was being too much and that she was just getting so frustrated that she was going to leave, um, tired of his shenanigans. And he actually um, trips over another furniture in his room and really hurts his head where he gets cut by the glass his head um, but gets cut by a glass and he almost you know basically slices his neck open to where he would almost butt out and die um but it's like like that so I don't know where I was going with this but yeah it's, it's amazing besides that weird situation <laughs> where it didn't really feel right um other than that it, this was great I this is like okay this is the type of writing and historical romances that I've been just wanting so bad and this hit so good and I'm so glad it's like my first six star read for this year so I love it I just love this this is just so great and then so we have that and then I read When Beauty Tamed the Beast by Eloisa James so this is that back here I rated this one a four star, so I read this in a day. So Saturday, I stayed up until like midnight, and then I started this one on Sunday. And I think I finished it Sunday night. Sunday night or Monday. I, I literally finished this in a day too. So again, kind of shocked because if you know me, this takes me um it takes me a while. I would say I'm an average reader. I read about like probably fifty pages an hour, but I usually read about eight books a month at most. Sometimes I'm reading up to ten, maybe twelve. My like fourteen is the most I've gotten, and that's usually in the summertime. So I'm just shocked that I read this so quickly. And I swear the beast put me in such a funk mood. Like this one put me such a took me so long to finish that. There you go, yeah. So long to finish that that it's it's, it's just crazy to me. So this one's a four star because again, Eloisa James is kind of hit or miss for me. And and this one, I liked the aspect here. It's like the, the main character reminded me so much of the character House from that TV show. And reading the author's note, she mentioned she was inspired to by his character to make the hero have house. So I'm like, okay, I was I'm not crazy. That's kind of like what it was. So I actually really liked that. Um it made it really interesting. And although the other thing that was kind of repetitive to me, they do like morning, um, she, they tend to like pull is at the house, um, and she's there, you know, trying to, I think they're just kind of waiting to decide for like the engagement kind of thing. It's like, oh, well, I didn't really want to be engaged to you and that kind of a thing. And, um, it also explores the, the relationship dynamics between him and his dad and his mom and, um, so I have like a little secondary romance kind of aspect in it as well. But they would meet, um, but anyway, they would meet in the, um, morning pond for the most part. He would come and they would wake up at dawn. Because, you know, swimming helps him with his injured knee. And I think injured thigh, the knee, whatever. So his muscle is actually, has, is basically dead. That muscle had died because of the injury that he sustained. And he sustained it by his dad when he was a young boy. Um, cause his dad had like an opium addiction at that time. That was kind of like the whole reason why, you know, there's like a little second chance in there because his dad kind of, that was why him and his mom parted ways was that was like the last straw and she remarried. Um, and then he was still very angry at his mom, at the mom that he, you know, divorced her and, um, kind of tried to put her knee through the mud through all of that. So he's been estranged from his son for a while. So he has, so the main, main character... Pierce has that issue with you know trusting I think without letting anyone close um because of like his parents and how that has affected and he's for the most part has lived in France um the majority of the time so he went to school there and he's very educated doctor but yeah so <laughs> sidetracked so they went to the pool and I do that every every morning and you know it's kind of the whole attraction thing and being cold and towels she would wait 
being wrapped into the towels waiting for him to finish and things like that so that's kind of like it kind of was like very slow even though I read this really fast it was like a very repetitive sense and I wish they kind of shook up their interactions a little bit more instead of that really being the most common like that could be maybe one or two but like that was the only time they really talked to each other um and then, of course, there was this big, an epidemic kind of happened at the estate. And that was kind of like the big catalyst, like, climax. You know, and that was where he also took care of her and everything like that. So, I don't want to get too much in spoilers of that. But I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. It was just also, just sometimes the writing style choices that Louisa James um, does kind of draws you out of it. And kind of, I don't know, it just makes me feel disconnected from the characters in the scenes at some point um I think it's just because it, sometimes things aren't explained very well that as they could be um when being introduced to the scene and such like I'm not exactly sure how how best to explain it but that's my experience with Louisa James so that's why I think sometimes there's hit or miss because like it doesn't especially like the interactions because of that it's not set up very well that it like it feels disconnected and totally out of place um with her character so and this one it worked for me it, okay so it's definitely a four star I really enjoyed it um I think also because I just the, the main heroine she was just such a great character too um, I enjoyed reading her point of view and everything um and I think it was like I think the this like Beast, it played into the, the, the fact of them both being vain in some way. For her, uh, it wasn't very, um, like with Beast, the character was very whiny and just annoying in it and very immature. And this one, it's her, she's actually kind of at the root of her character. She's just lonely. And she, especially since her mother had passed away when, since she was a young girl. And her mother's just been known as just being very um, promiscuous and whatever. And so how that kind of puts a shadow on people on her and because she looks like her mother that like they just obviously that's just how unfortunately society kind of does is they put the sins of the mother onto the daughter. And she also realizes and understands that her beauty is because of this the society structure that her worth is tied to her beauty and things like that so she understands that so to her um anything detrimental to her physical looks um harms her 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 security and things like that which much like how society values like puts their worth onto their looks so something that happens in this um, in this book kind of challenges that for this character, for her. I really thought it was interesting and also um, helps her try to overcome that situation to allow Pierce to, to love her. And so we have that back and forth of she doesn't won't allow him to love her because of that or um, believe him that he actually loves her because he had already pushed her away and she had already opened up herself to that hurt and then after that and then something happens to her that she pushes him away because of that and now she's feeling that because of that vein and so he like the over time showing her that he truly loves her and that doesn't matter what she looks like and things like that so she's still a beautiful person um, and at the end we don't you know she's healing and things like that so whatever the, you know, situations happen. I don't want to, I'm trying to do my best not to spoil. So, so yeah. So, it, it brought into, it used vanity into both characters. Into that, like, what is, you know, Beauty and the Beast and that whole thing. Um, he's also known as the Beast. His nickname is the Beast because, you know, he's such a grumpy guy. But it's also shown that he's also like her feeling those intense things as well and is lonely at the core as being and everything like that so I think that is what I liked about this it's kind of challenging that there was a point where I 
I did like, I still didn't like her as much as I liked Samantha and Yours Until Dawn. And I think it's also because it still could have been a little more, a little more character development. Just because I like that. Just another little more piece to her. But besides that, and then maybe we got a lot more interactions, I think, besides just the, the pool and the physical attraction. Um, but yeah, it was still, still great. So, four star. So, so yeah, that was, it was amazing. So yeah, I, that's, that's where I'm at. So I have, we have Beast. So, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. So for a recap, Beast was a two star. You got the step back there. Teresa Medeiros, Yours Until Dawn, six star. And When Beauty Tamed the Beast by Eloise James. And this was a four star. So, so yeah. I was kind of scared. <laughs> I was scared that I, this wasn't going to turn as well. So I'm like, it was going to be a hot mess. But um, I'm glad that the, the second and the, the third book, so starting off with the really dud one, really, really felt like it was going to hurt my chances here. So, so yeah, this was great experience, and I like the fact that now that Becky is doing for fantasy romance. So, so yeah, I'm only going to be so now I'm really interested to see what her thoughts are and everything like that. All right, well, I think I'm going to end it here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit chaotic. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm so glad I found some, uh, I definitely, this is such a winner. So I'm glad I found a, a new favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, so I will link everything down below. I will, I have my Goodreads, my Instagram, and my Amazon wishlist down below. Um, as well as I will have Becky's video down below as well as soon as that is available. So with that said, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.